Okay, I'm with John McDonald. He's the Director of Technical Strategy and Policy, Direct, uh, Policy Development at General Electric. John, welcome, and thanks Thank for you. being with us. Let me start with this uh, broad brush question. If 2010 was the year of the smart meter, what's 2011 going to be about? Yeah, I really think we're going to see within the next year or two uh, a big shift from metering to more of a focus on the distribution system mm -hmm. and improving efficiency and improving reliability. Mm -hmm. So uh, what issues and challenges are top of mind with customers as you're wandering around talking with customers? What are their real points of pain? Well, because of my role as chairing the governing board for NIST, right. I get a lot of questions from utilities about standards. Right. So one is um, um, deploying technology mm -hmm. before all of the standards are finished. Right. And the concept of uh, how do we protect our investment um, you know, and have migration paths and be able to expand and not, not replace, but be able to grow. So what are you hearing about, uh, from customers, meaning utilities, about distribution automation and, and grid applications? Strongly interested, merely curious, pilots going to move into deployments? Where are we on that scale? Yeah, I, um, the thing that um, has always been in place, particularly in the U.S., is the strong value proposition. Mm -hmm for reducing losses through capacitor control, right. uh, reducing demand with voltage control, and then improving reliability. Um, the business case has been strong in general for that, except the uh, hurdle has been the communications that's needed. So, you okay. know, for substation communications, it's easy because it's more point to point. Mm -hmm. But with feeder automation, <clears throat> you need two-way communications over a wide geographic area. And many times the cost for that was the impediment okay. to the business case. So we're at the point now where the, we have the technology and the communications, um, the reliability is there and the cost has come down. And in some cases the communications infrastructures had been put in place for smart meters and now they can kind of uh, leverage that. Yes. That's ideally yeah, if you can um, have enough, that takes two things is the foresight to look that far ahead and the second thing is a breakdown um, silos among groups so that the, the metering group works with the distribution automation group right. and they collectively say well, let's let's look at one platform to handle the communications needs for all of us. In a number of parts of the country utilities are struggling to figure out how to pay for the smart grid. Uh, do you see obstacles or challenges in terms of regulatory re regulations and policy that, that need to be changed to help smart grid move forward? Yeah, ideally there's um, there's just some common themes, you know, that, that we'd like to see more emphasis on. One would be um, the utilities can um, <clears throat> implement conservation efforts like voltage control, sure. not just during peak periods, but during off-peak periods. Mm -hmm. And by selling less electricity by doing that, have some kind of decoupled rates like California led right. the way with, so they get compensated in other ways. That's that's one because uh, we. You know, the average uh, delivered voltage in the U.S. is 122.5. Okay. The standard is 114 to 126. Okay. And we could go down to 118 uh -huh. and free up a tremendous amount of infrastructure. Which right. We, which we, we wouldn't have to build new substations and uh, new power plants. Um, and the customer would never see that voltage difference. Give me an example or two of a utility that you think is doing a particularly good job with the smart grid or some element of it. Uh, well, the one that um, we have the longest experience with, you know, with smart grid is AEP, uh -huh, American yeah. Electric Power. Yeah. Um, so it's been over 18 months, actually, of, of different smart grid projects. And, um, you know, this, this is, it's, um, it's a utility that operates in 11 states. So you have basically 11 strategies yeah. based on the regulatory policy in each of those states. So there's been some metering projects in some states some uh, distribution focused projects storage in states. projects yeah. <clears throat> storage projects but what we did um, actually uh, about 10 months ago was we stepped back after the experience we had in all these projects and we summarized the lessons we've learned in the mm -hmm. deployments to date and it's just four PowerPoint slides but it's just very realistic information on what we did what we learned and what we changed going forward and when I use those in a, in a talk or a course I'm doing, as soon as I start, start these slides, everyone takes out a piece of paper if they don't have one already. Because this is just information you don't normally see. We don't step back enough, you know, mm -hmm. and actually say, 
what have we learned and what changes are we going to make. So we have, through the experience we have with a number of different projects, um, you know, we, uh, we summarized the changes that were made. We've implemented those changes now going forward. Well, I'll finish up with a couple questions about uh, GE. So typically, many companies have a focus or a theme for a particular year or period of time. What's your, what's your theme or your focus at GE Digital Energy? Not only this is my personal theme mm -hmm. and, and the business theme, we have a staff meeting next week, is um, <clears throat> you know, my, my responsibility is strategy, technical strategy, policy, and standards. And my, my theme is, um, is um, you know, reaching out not only across our business, but across GE. Mm -hmm. For instance, our smart appliance group. Right. Uh, we work together on standards um, and, and other businesses within GE and doing things much more holistically. So our strategy then, will, you know, we'll start with our business, but it'll extend to GE. Um, standards, uh, we're already, we have it in place uh, where we have formal groups now that cut across more of the company, mm -hmm. and we have a regular rhythm. Uh -huh. And policy, we've done this for two years now, where we have all the, uh, the government relations and the policy folks across a wide part of GE, and we, um, we uh, have conference calls at least a couple, you know, once every couple weeks. But we have face-to-face -face meetings several times a year. Mm -hmm. And we learn from each other. But the more we know what each other's doing, the more we have a cohesive And it is strategy. becoming that kind of systems uh, problem. You know, I really think we're going to see a lot of happen with the meeting of building automation in the grid over the next few years as well. Yeah. So, John, given what you said about the industry and about GE, what's your biggest challenge in the next year? I think um, there's two. One, within the company, it's, it's truly, truly realizing that holistic approach. It's truly getting uh, the stakeholder, all the key stakeholders, not only in our business but across the wider company, working together. And and uh, basically, we have a corporate mandate. You know, I mean, we we know that we need to do it, and everyone acknowledges it. And uh, and it can't be done informally, mm -hmm. we need to have more of a formal regular rhythm. So that's one challenge. The other challenge outside, I think, is um, is realizing that um, education is a step that we, need, as an industry, need right. to take, mm -hmm. whether it's on the consumer side right. or even on the grid side right. with new technology. Yeah. Uh, education first before we jump into deploying technology. All right. John, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thanks.